When I launched this short video, I promised to make a more detailed one about the electromagnetic tool changer and the printer around it. Sorry to keep you waiting, but making videos isn't the best of my skills, and it took me a while. So, I present this printer that I built with the objective of printing with several printheads, using an electromagnet for coupling, with no need of specific unprinted parts. I will give you an overview of the technical choices I made for the different functions and the tips I found to achieve the coupling function. The choice of an architecture with a mobile heatbed and a Core XY drive system imposed itself very quickly because it makes it possible to have a very rigid structure as the motors are fixed the moving parts are light and can move quickly, and you can increase one of the dimensions to arrange a storage area for the printheads. The printer currently has two printheads and there is space for a third one. A fourth space is used to purge and to calibrate a head. I have been immediately interested in the principle of a heat bed mounted on three axes to allow automatic leveling, which is an essential feature. I chose a 30 by 30 cm bed and built the printer around that, also having a print height of 30 cm. I choose to use linear rails for the movements. It simplifies the design compared to other solutions, which on the other end could be cheaper. I made a fairly complete model of the printer with Fusion 360. Then I ordered the aluminium profiles cut to my dimensions. I printed all the mechanical parts in carbon fiber PTG. In addition to a nice look, the pieces are very rigid. The three Z-axis motors are standard NEMA 17. On each Z-axis, there is an arm, which is one of the support points for the bed. As the three Z-axis can move independently, the bed support has three legs made with blind nuts, which are just standing on the landing areas of the arms. This makes a Maxwell coupling, which we will reuse for coupling the printhead with the carriage. Once in place, the bed is very stable. X and Y motors are 60 mm NEMA 17 that weigh 500 grams each. But since they are fixed, the weight is not a constraint. They are mounted outside of the frame to save space on brackets built in two parts. One of the brackets holds the motor one centimeter higher than the other because the belts for each motor are on different levels. The mobile blocks, which ensure the connection between the Y rails and the X axis, are built in three parts and held by the axis of the pulleys and the fixing screws to the Y ray. The fixed pulleys are integrated into the frame. The carriage is based on a plate with a hole for the magnet screwed to the X-ray carriage. The rear part of the carriage is held by four screws. XY belts are fixed on each side to a threaded rod with a nylon collar and stretched on the other side by these small pieces that pinch them. Just screw to tension the belt. At the back of the carriage, there's also a limit switch for the X-axis and a Z-probe to the bed. I removed the tab from the limit switch because it greatly affects the accuracy of the measurement. A 30 mm fan cools the magnet when power. The PCB groups together the various connections for this mobile part. The front plate of the carriage has slots in which I glued 4 mm diameter steel rods, which will constitute the landing areas for the coupling with the printhead. All printheads will feature a plate like this, with a steel washer to stick to the magnet, and hemispherical lugs, again simply made with cap nuts. This is the famous Maxwell coupling I spoke about earlier. Maxwell assures us that when they are in contact, the two parts are always in the same position relative to each other. 
and this is rather essential for what we want to do. The rear part of the carriage holds the magnet with a screw. The screw and its lock nut are used to adjust the position of the magnet so that it is a few tenths of a millimeter from the steel washer. There is a trick for the coupling to work properly. It's located in the printed blade. For the assembly to be precise, the metal washer must be able to move very slightly towards the magnet to stick to it when powered. For this, we use the natural elasticity of the first printing layers of the printed material. If we look at this plate in cross-section, we see that there is a circular band 5 mm wide, which is only 0.4 mm thick, to hold the part that holds the steel washer. This strip may deform slightly to allow the washer to move toward the magnet. I started by printing this part in PETG, but as soon as I was able to perform a dual extrusion, I printed it by combining carbon filament for the rigid parts and flex for the flexible parts. In this way, the flexible part is 1 mm thick instead of 0.4, and the flex filament will have much better hold over time than PET. Now that we catch them firmly and with precision, I can tell you about the print heads. And I can start with this little accessory, which, when not used to hang the squeegee, is a maintenance dock. The large permanent magnet fixed inside keeps the head in a convenient position to work on it, to unclog or change a nozzle, for example. This direct access to a fully operational print head is very useful. The main part is fixed by screws on the interface plate. And for that kind of assembly, I use printed threads, which are very suitable as long as they are not unscrewed frequently. This interface part supports the different elements of the head. The parking interface, which has a female part on the head and a male part on the frame side. The male part is made of carbon fiber tubes used to make kites. Two magnets on each side keep the head in place when parked. The ones on the frame side are mounted on spring-loaded stoppers, which gives the assembly some freedom at contact with the carriage. The rest is pretty standard. Here, the flange also supports the fan. It makes unmounting easier. This head is the first one I built. It uses a V6 format with a 15mm turbine. I have several sets, heat sink, heat block, nozzle, already mounted with different nozzles, including a ruby one to print carbon filament, for example. It's easier to change the whole assembly than just the nozzle, and this can be done when cold. Here is my second print head using a dragonfly set. I switched to two 40mm turbines to balance the airflow and have a more compact design. And here's an attempt for a volcano head that uses this tiny copper heatsink. But I haven't yet managed to print correctly with this head without really understanding why. These heads use fixed extruders and bottom tubes. I am in a design phase of a direct extrusion printhead. The cables and the bottom tube that goes from the frame to the head are guided by a carbon fiber strip fixed to the frame. The same principle is used for the cables that goes to the carriage from the other end of the frame. Before moving on, we must make a small detour via the XYZ probe. To be able to print with two print heads, it's necessary to know with an accuracy of a few hundreds of a millimeter the relative position of each nozzle in the three dimensions. The XYZ probe is attached to the bed support. A piezo is glued to the edge of the part and an aluminum cylinder is glued to the center of the piezo. Then, a G-code macro sets the Z position and finds the center of the cylinder in X and Y. 
Once this is done, the system calculates the value of the corrections to be inserted in the printed setup. After this detour, we arrive at the end of the visit to discover the extruders and the interface connector with each head. I printed sort of a cable duct. The filament box for two spools. In addition to protect filaments from dust, I tried to protect them from humidity with a Peltier condensing unit. I'll make a video about it. End of filament detection is of course homemade. The electronics and power supply are accessible just by removing the filament box. There is a 350 watt power supply, a Duet 2 Wi-Fi card and a Duet 5 extension to have plenty of inputs and outputs. They are perfect for this use and the software that goes with them is also very suitable, well documented, reliable and configurable. Just thanks to the developers. The visit wouldn't be complete without going through the trash can, essential for a well-kept workspace. I hope this presentation has been of any interest to you. I tried to be complete without being too long. And as you may have noticed, I'm not Spielberg. I'm of course interested to your comments and questions.